Welcome back to the Belted Galloway Homestead. It's a warm one today and the Belties are looking for some shade and to take it easy until uh, the evening gets in here. I moved them this morning out to a, uh, a new pasture and uh, I had some questions about the uh, about my pastures and uh, that was a great idea. I should have done that and go along with the hay video that I done earlier because uh, they are grass fed. So I'm gonna take you through and talk to pastures and hopefully that answers the questions that you have. Hopefully the wind isn't too bad uh, out here. It seems to gust every now and then. I've got about six acres of pasture, I would estimate. And this broke up into uh, three larger pastures and all three smaller areas. And I'll kind of show you that. Uh, here's the pasture that I took the cattle off of the belties off of and you can see that they had it pretty well eaten down here you can see my finger so the grass is about as deep as my fingers is tall and there's some taller stuff here and there but um that's why i kind of use that as a guide on when i need to get the the belties off of a pasture is when they have these areas that they have it very well eaten and then there's these patches of this grass here. I don't think it's the best grass. Uh, they will eat it, but they tend to stay away from it. Um, I haven't sprayed this pasture in a while, and uh, I do have thistle that I have to deal with. Right there, it's a pretty aggressive thistle. And uh, what I tried to do is to keep the, uh, keep the blooms mowed off. Uh, but I did do some checking and found out that, that this thistle is a biannual, but it also spreads by the root. So there was some times there where I thought it was just uh, spread by seed and I could mow it every year and it eventually it would die out. But uh, further investigation found out that this stuff spreads by putting out uh, runners or shoots underground and spreading. So, uh, but if I keep the blooms down, but I've got a, I've got a pretty pretty thick in some areas out through here so eventually I'll spray again to try to knock it down pretty aggressive you got to get some 2,4-D on it got to get pretty good amount of 2,4-D on it to uh to kill it so but this is one of the small areas here um that I have for the belties there's no water in this area uh, no water over here in this area another little small area here this is a wetter area. Uh, last to dry out when the, when the snow is melting and the uh, the uh, spring is coming on. But again, kind of the same same uh, same idea here on that. Here's one of the larger pastures, and again, it's got that mixture of uh, tall patches and low patches that the, uh, the Belties eat on. And again, I got these areas where they don't eat. Sometimes it has to do with a, a cow patty. So they won't eat where a cow patty has, has landed. And those need to be broke up. But again, we've got, uh, we've got some areas here that's fairly short. So uh, that's why I moved them.
again, some areas here that are uh, well grazed. So it's got to, I got to give it time to come back. Again, there's some thistle. Thistle getting ready to bloom here. I'm going to have to come out and mow and knock that down. Just, uh, just to keep it from, from blooming. And then we've got uh, milkweed. I don't know how many people are aware, but milkweed is the favorite for monarch butterflies. So monarchs will come and land on the milkweed and uh, lay their egg and the larvae will eat. So like this one here, you see how the leaves are gone. And most likely there is a monarch butterfly that's been eating on this. So we try to leave some of these uh, for the monarch butterflies. And you'll see them throughout the pasture. And uh, just trying to help with other insects. So this is the largest pasture see it in a lot of the videos uh, even the um, the manure spreading video you'll see some good aerial shots of that pasture when I was taking the skid steer and uh, spreading some manure so we're you know, take a look at that if you want to see some aerial shots of the pastures the way they're laid out uh, but again a well well eaten well grazed pasture, not much there for them. So that's why I wanted to move them. We started out um, kind of dry. I was afraid we were gonna have a bad drought and I was gonna have to feed the Belties, uh, supplement with hay. But then we started getting some rain and some of the, some of the grass started coming in and that, and uh, it's gotten better. It's still not as tall as it has been in uh, some other years. But uh, again, this is the largest pasture. Got a nice tree out there for them to get under, to get out of the, out of the sun. It wraps on around the corner and that. But uh, again, kind of looks the same. Um, needed to get, needed to give it, give it a rest. And uh, then again, I'll monitor, see what they're eating on and see how fast this pasture grows back to uh, determine when to rotate them back in. I had, a, I had a hard time rotating too since I added Maddox, uh, the bull, because I want to give the I want to give the cows three months rest when they calve before they start breeding again. So I've got to separate him from the calves and I don't have a like a bull pen to stick him in. Um, so it's so it made it hard for uh, made it hard for the rotation um, of the of the pastures and that but getting back to it now again you can see some uh, see some milkweed out there left quite a few for the monarch butterflies but if you have a bull you know you've got uh, you've got your 12 month cycle where you got your nine month gestation uh, for the uh, the cow to give birth to the calf and then uh, give them three months rest and then try to calve in the spring uh, when the snow is gone but um, before the heat hits too hard and that so we got some asp trees out here and uh, when the wind blows I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not but they are just absolutely beautiful. Those white bark asp trees and then the small round leaves just sit there and glisten. And uh, you can hear the wind uh, going through the, the leaves. Really beautiful spring and summer and fall here in Minnesota. One other thing I noticed too, these ash trees, they're pretty soft. So the woodpeckers like to uh, to build nest in them. I was out here the other day looking and I noticed that something had built a nest right there in that ash tree. That's probably a woodpecker. And it looks like a well-used hole. 
Thought about putting a camera out here to see what uh, what's in it, but uh, but I haven't yet. When you're rotating pastures, you may need to rotate some of your other accessories that the cattle use. Uh, here I'm bringing over the uh, scratcher that was made out of a street sweeper, and also their mineral with the uh, with the fly preventer in it um, that works with their manure. I've got a good video on that if uh, you're interested in some of that fly control. Also, make sure they've got the water. Here we got the automatic water and uh, just making sure that that works. I wanna make sure they got water. And then I uh, always keep uh, both type of salt, just the regular white salt, but also the mineral salt. And uh, the fly spray, other other fly prevention. If you got them over in the uh, in another pasture, um, here is a 14 ounce can of fly insecticide. I found these these tall sprayers are harder and harder to get, but they take four D size batteries. And uh, like I said, they're they're the taller sprayer. You can set to spray so often, and also. Um, I got the taller 14 ounce can. Um, I mount them up pretty high because a outstretched neck and a and a cow tongue can reach pretty far. So I uh, put them up there next to a structure to prevent them being knocked down. So just make sure you bring your other accessories along if uh, if the cows are going to be in another pasture for a while. So this is the third largest um, pasture that I have and uh, this is one of them that I mowed and uh, applied 2,4-D and boy does it do a good job it knocked down that broad leaf knocked down the dandelions and you can see how tall this grass is um, get down here <laughs> Even Wendy can lay in it, and you can just barely see the top of her. So, um, so it, it's uh, it's done really well since uh, since I mowed it and applied the 2,4-D. I've had it taller, but uh, but it's in good shape, and I wanted to get the the belties on here so they could uh, they could start enjoying it. I do have a stubborn area over here with the thistle. I'll come out here with a hand wand and apply some 2,4-D or, or something to, uh, to try to knock this down. Definitely mow it again or, uh, or like I said, weed whack it, but it's just a small area that's just persistent. So uh, I'll try to, try to deal with that. Other than that, nice. Uh, some of the grass is coming up here with their, their, little, uh, their little tails here. So you're seeing a lot of that. If you're picking that up on the camera, that's the uh, like the reddish type, the reddish hue, are those things on top. But uh, nice, nice pasture. Really good grazing. They'll get. They should get weeks out of this, out of this pasture grazing. Hey there, Maddox. Boy, what a good daddy he is. Keeps an eye on his, his young'uns and lets them hang with. See how tall the grass is there up in the windy? She is growing up to be a beautiful, beautiful calf. And here's the last pasture. Kind of an auxiliary pasture that I put in to provide more, uh, more grazing, more rotation. Also, just to reduce the amount of mowing I need to do. So this one here's got the uh, T-post. Only got three strings of wire, and I basically sized it to the amount of wire I had for the uh, the white lightning here, and then topped it off with uh, with some uh, some rope up here. But I picked up a uh, some used white lightning wire here and uh, kind of laid it out to uh, the fit the amount that I had. I don't have any water out here 
or electric. So when I do rotate uh, the belties out here, I've got to run that temporarily. I've got to put in a temporary water trough and keep that filled with a garden hose and then also run a electric out and uh, put a temporary fence charger or a fencer out here to uh, electrify the fence. But, uh, and you can see that in uh, the video here, I've had it where I was transferring the, uh, the cattle across the driveway and that, you can see a, a video of that. And again, it's kind of similar to the other pasture. This one here, I also mowed and applied 2,4-D and man, it really cleaned it up. It got rid of the broad leaf. It got rid of, uh, got rid of the dandelion. Uh, and you can take a look at that 2,4-D video, but uh, none of that, none of that broad leaf and, and dandelion now um, is in my lawn or, or in these, uh, these two pastures. It's done a real good job on cleaning it up and knocking it down. And then I've got to take some over here into the tree line. The Belties really love this. And come over here into the shade. They even eat some of the roughage. Belties are really good at that. They can uh, they can uh, live on some pretty rough stuff. But uh, the woods is a constant battle. I'm trying to keep it uh, keep it beat back, so I have to get a my weed whacker or or um, my BR out here and knock this down. But as you can see, it's fairly tall also. And I'll end up rotating them over. One additional item is I have been thinking of doing a drilling uh, with some, uh, you know, some pasture seed. So I'm checking into a no-till drill. I wouldn't want to till all this up and just have somebody come in and drill the seed in some kind of a pasture mix. So I have been thinking about that. I don't know if any one of you have ever done that, had success in it. Um, but um, I'm going to check and see if there's uh, there's anybody that can do it. I think every now and then you need to replenish, renew. Even though there's latent seeds in there and it comes up. But I don't know. That might help. I have to check the cost and all that. But doing a no-till drill. But that's, uh, that's the pastures. The different issues. How I keep the belties fed. Any questions? Please let me know. Thank you.